Good morning. Good morning. I was saying in the back before we come out, this is the most formal thing that we do. And whenever I put on this robe, I just get an inkling of acting out, and I have to constrain myself a bit. Um, but it's fun to be with you this, this Saturday morning, and welcome to the convocation of the 23-24 academic year. It's a pleasure to have you with us. Um, now, some of us may feel uncomfortable with all this, some of us even up on the stage. But I want to remind us that rhythm and ritual are how we are held. Rhythm and ritual are how we are held. And it reminds us, or remembers us, if you will, brings us back together, draws us back to each other to remind ourselves, what is it, why are we here? What's our purpose of our belonging to each other? So it's a pleasure to welcome you, and you're going to need your program, so make sure you have one. Um, to kind of walk through this time with us as we walk together.
God be with you. Let us pray. God be in my head and in my understanding. God be in my eyes and in my mouth. God be in my mouth and in my speaking. God be in my heart and in my thinking. God be in my hand and in my heart. Amen. Psalm 19, verses 1 through 10. The heavens are telling the glory of God, and the firmament proclaims God's handiwork. Day to day pours forth speech, and night to night declares knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words. Their voice is not heard. Yet their voice goes out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In the heavens, God has set a tent for the sun, which comes out like a bridegroom from his wedding canopy, and like a strong human runs its course with joy. Its rising is from the end of the heavens, and its circuit to the end of them, and nothing is hid from its heat. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and drippings of the honeycomb. The word of the Lord. Colossians 1, 3 through 20. 
May you be made strong with all the strength that comes from God's glorious power, and may you be prepared to endure everything with patience, while joyfully giving thanks to the Creator, who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the light. God has rescued us from the power of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of God's beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Christ is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in them all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers. All things have been created through Christ and for Christ. Christ is before all things, and in them all things hold together. Christ is the head of the body, the church, the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that Christ may, might come to have first place in everything. For in Christ all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through Christ God was pleased to reconcile to God's self all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of the cross. The word of the Lord. from Acts 17, 22 to 28. Then Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with an, an inscription to an unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is served by human hands, as though God needed anything, since God gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor, God made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of their places where they would live so that they would search for God and perhaps grope for and find God. Though indeed God is not far from each one of us. For in Christ we live and move and have our being, as even some of your own prophets have said, for we too are God's offering. The word of the Lord. As the sign of the emergence of our learning community, during the call to matriculation, we will join together in a circle surrounding the pews. Faculty. Staff, would you join the circle, please? Alumni, would you please join the circle? And returning students, would you please join the circle as we surround the new students in the center along with the rest of the assembly. God has called us to this time.
In our unity in Jesus Christ, through the Holy Spirit, we proclaim. Almighty God, Creator Lord, Lend us your loving hand and bless our days ahead with your presence. Thank you for these students. Thank you for sending them to us and placing them within our care. Be ever in their hearts, in their minds, and on their lips, that we all may come to know your word, find joy in your presence, and worship you in holiness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
The peace of the Lord be with you. Okay, you made it. <laughs> um, I have my reading glasses, so I have to kind of stare a little harder to see you. Um, it's a pleasure to present to you and talk to you a little bit about, um, I want to talk about healers and rebuilders. Now, I should say I'm going to do a little bit of a literary trick where I'm going to start at the end and then try to catch up with myself and hopefully I come full circle. We'll see if that works. Um, I'm supposed to give you a charge. So my charge to you is you are called to be healers and rebuilders. I'll say it again. You are called to be healers and rebuilders. Now you may say, I don't know, but let me try to catch up and see if we can bring that to be true. Um, Luke 4.18 has been a text that I have been stuck in for over a year. And Paul Stanky and I have this conversation, this running conversation, and he said to me today, it didn't let you go. And I have to say, yes, it didn't let me go. But last year I, I shared about Luke 4, and it's the passage in verse 18, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, and I'll just read it for you. But last year I was focused on insiders and outsiders. There's some of us who feel inside and some of us who feel outside. And the challenge of insiders and outsiders is we actually think about each other very differently. And that part of what Christ was doing in this moment of proclamation was saying all the people who think they're on the outside, I'm bringing them close, I'm bringing them near. And all of you who think you are on the inside, you may find yourself on the outs. Well, this year, as I read the text, I have a different perspective, not on that part of the text, but just on Christ's action. So let me read the text for you. Verse 18, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recover his sight to the blind and set at liberty those who are oppressed to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Now here is where the interesting drama takes place in the text. Verse 20, and he rolls up the scrolls, gave it back to the attendants and sat down. And the eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. And he began to say, today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. Now I just want us to bring that alive a little bit. Clearly Jesus is used to coming and reading a text, and in the synagogue, the assumption is there would be some sort of conversation about that. And so he reads the text, he gets the scroll, finds this particular scripture in the Old Testament, Isaiah 61, reads it, and then sits down. It's a dramatic pause. And so they're looking at him, all eyes on him, assuming that there's going to be something that follows, there's going to be some sort of dialogue. And then Jesus says something that in some ways um, shapes the rest of his ministry. Not the ancient text, but today. Today, I'm bringing forth what was abstract into the embodied presence. Today, in front of you standing here, this scripture is fulfilled. Now, it's interesting because the crowd reacts in a surprise sort of way, they're impressed with him. But not too long after that, he 
trouble makes. And again, there's a little bit of mischief, if not a lot of bit of mischief in Jesus. And it seems like it's going very well. And I thought, well, why mess it up now? Just go with the flow. And Jesus decides to mess it up by saying, by the way, again, you who think you were insiders might find yourself outside. But I want to come back to that notion that Jesus says today. And I want to say to you today, you've been made and called to be healers and rebuilders. Now, all of that may not come to you today. Um, it was almost 40 years ago when I met a man named Mr. Smith who I began to have this notion that not just simply I wanted to work with people in a population that was challenging, but maybe I was called to be a healer and a rebuilder. Now, Mr. Smith, the backstory is I used to work for an organization um, just out of college. I graduated and I thought I wasn't going to get a job and I went for an interview, went for another interview and they hired me and it shocked me because I thought I don't have experience to do this job. And the job was working with older inmates in a prison. I'm thinking I'm 21 and they're 65. I don't even know their world. And the population I work with, half of whom were in prison and half of whom were paroled, um, either were in for murder or paroled for murder or they were professional. I had one guy tell me he's a professional bank robber. And we used to have these interesting conversations, half of which I understood he was talking about, but explained to me how he robbed banks. Now here I am, a very impressionable 21 year old working with people who were professional criminals. And I just thought, okay, this is a very interesting job over my head. But Mr. Smith was unique in one way. He lived, he had been paroled, and um, he was 67 years old. He lived in North Philadelphia. He's an African-American man. And when I went to visit him the first time, I recall thinking, this man lives in a junk heap. He, he lived in a single row house, but you could not walk through his house for the junk that he had built up in his house. You couldn't sit in his living room. I remember the first time I sat in his kitchen, he took me back through this little hallway and there were bottles lined up along the walls. So it was a little narrow path you walked by. And I sat in his kitchen with bags and trash around and you could sit and listen and hear mice running around as we sat and talked. And so Paul, when you talk about God meeting us in the darkest places, that's one of the darkest places I've ever been with someone. And Mr. Smith had a certain despairing quality on him. And what struck me right away is he had nobody who visited him. He didn't get out, he didn't have a car, he didn't have transportation, and he had a terrible cough. I think he had actually had lung cancer. With this man, I spent the next year and a half getting to know who he was, helping him to get his house a little bit clean, um, taking him to the doctor, buying him heaters. He didn't have um, a furnace in his house that would heat the house. And it was a, it's a very challenging thing for me because here I was thinking a little psych grad, I was just going to help somebody who was paroled. And I got pulled in deeper. Now, Mr. Smith was funny because he very seldom smiled. He, I remember taking pictures of him. He let me take pictures. I'm not sure why he would do that, but he let me take pictures of him and he did not smile. I thought, okay, I get at least a smile. He did not smile and he didn't talk that much. And I thought for sure I was always on the verge of making him angry or upset. But we both develop an appreciation and maybe even a care for each other. When that job um, ran out of funding and I left that job, I remember thinking, I'm not sure how long he's going to make it without somebody checking on him. But the part that influenced me deeply was in my failure, not in my success with him. I realized I was not enough. I tried to be family to him. I tried to be, in some ways, a bit of a son to him. But I could not. And that left me with a sort of hunger that I needed more. I needed to get trained to know more of how I might serve this man, how to be a healer and a rebuilder in his life. Because quite frankly, it wasn't just like his body that was broken down, but his social relationships were very nil. Now, I can recall the time, and I think he trusted me enough to tell me how he got in prison, which is always, if you worked in prison, it's always an interesting thing. There's a certain level of trust that happens when someone tells you how I got here. 
And he shared with me he was in a bar and he had argued with a man at the bar. He, was, he had been drinking and he stabbed the man and the man died. This is the beginning, strangely, of my hunger and pursuit to be a healer and a rebuilder. Now, it doesn't sound like a story that would lead to that. Actually, it sounds like one you decide to quit and do something else. But what I saw in this man and what I saw in the other folk that I was working with, the ones who had families were thriving and the ones who were alone were in despair. And it struck me deeply that we need each other. Somebody needs to come and visit us. Somebody needs to come and care for us. And so I think that's part of what it means to be healers and rebuilders. Jesus in this story is not just concerned about the physical healing, but the social healing, the social contract we have with each other. Not just a personal salvation, but a social shift so that in some ways we don't treat each other and engage each other in the same sorts of ways. Jesus embodies the work to serve to eliminate the structural barriers of relating even while he constrains us with love. And so you who feel like outsiders, whether it be because of your identity, your gender, um, your social status, Jesus says, I bring you near. And you who are wounded from trauma inside, Christ says, I heal that and bring you near. And all of us sitting in this room, because I believe this institution is called to be an institution that prepares healers and rebuilders. The next 20 years, maybe even 10 years, we'll be facing a great deal of challenge in this country. Climate is just beginning to, in some ways. And if you understand systems, you don't stop something once it gets going. It actually has to play itself out. The political polarization that we see, the sort of economic inequality that we're struggling with, and more importantly, institutional failure and corruption. These things are going to be with you as you sit with clients, as you sit with congregations, as you sit with parishioners, as you sit in communities, wherever you find yourself, these things are going to affect all of us. So you see, I believe deeply in that terrain, in that space, in these times, I can't help but charge you with anything else but to be a healer and a rebuilder. God bless you. And may you find your calling, not just simply in your own identity search, that's part of your calling, but in the communities you are called to serve. In the communities you are called to serve. I was called to serve Mr. Smith, and he shaped me in a way that had me going back to grad school and getting a degree in marriage and family therapy, and eventually a doctoral work. But it was an itch that got me to do that, and my itch began with him. So my prayer for you is that you begin with us, but I hope an itch begins in you. That you find yourself in the places you are called to serve, healing and rebuilding. God bless you. Please stand as we say the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit, 
He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he arose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified. She has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is our duty and delight that we should everywhere and always offer thanks and praise to you, O God, through Jesus Christ. Holy God, mighty Lord, we give you thanks and praise, for in the beginning you created all things, and it was good. All things found their unity in you. All things found their favor and blessing in your care. And when our first parents rebelled against your word of love and disunity entered the world, you did not forsake them or us. In love, you sent your son to be our savior, to reconcile all things through him, and so with the church on earth and all of creation and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join in the unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy are holy. you, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in your name. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Christ. Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. Glory, Glory to, to you, O oh God. Before he drew all things to himself upon that cross of reconciliation, Jesus gathered the disciples he loved around a table, his table, and taking bread, he gave thanks to you, Father, broke it, and gave it to all of them, 
saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after supper, Jesus took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Having this promise of forgiveness and presence, we boldly pray. Christ, Christ our, our host, host, be present, be present for us. us. Gracious Father, we remember with thanksgiving all that our Savior did for us. His love of the lost, his care of the dispossessed, his word that shattered self-righteousness, his teaching that we should love one another, his prayer for our unity in him. Above all, we remember his life-giving death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and the sending of the Holy Spirit to bring us to unity and faith. Gather the Seattle School community together to be a representative community of our Savior. May our ears be tuned to the Holy Spirit as we are taught, and may we become participants in bringing unity to all. Send now your Holy Spirit that through this bread and cup we might be forgiven the sin that divides us, and be strengthened in our faith and resolve to live our lives together for the sake of the gospel. Reconcile, Reconcile us, us to, to you, O Lord, Lord and, and to, to one, one another, another in the, in the breaking of the bread and, and the sharing of the cup. All honor and glory are yours, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, in your holy church, now and forever. Amen. Amen. As our, as our Savior has taught us to pray, we boldly proclaim, Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive, forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. In a moment, we'll invite you forward to receive the elements. If you are more comfortable remaining in your seat, you are welcome to do that. Um, if you would like us to bring elements to you in the end, we can do that as well if you need that. Um, we also have the bread, all the bread that we'll be serving is gluten free, dairy free, nut free. It does contain soy. If you would like to receive a blessing without receiving the elements, just come forward with your arms crossed and that will tell us so. And with that, come, the table is ready. Incomparable kindness the less than the least To the broken and the bad and the weak To all who are hungry There comes a cup To be filled with the fullness of God It's beyond all you can see Farther than It's a mystery. 
prayer for you that you would know how I and how long how high how deep is the love how deep is the love of Christ the width of two arms out Stretched on a tree and the length of the road to Calvary And the height of a crown on a cruel cross And the depth of the pain is a cause All for you, all for me Prayer for you that you would know how and how long, how how deep is the love, how deep is the love. How deep is the love of You are beautiful, my sweet, sweet song. You are beautiful, my sweet, sweet song. You are beautiful, my sweet, sweet song. I will sing again. You are so good to me. My Father in heaven, you are so good to me. You heal my broken heart. You are my Father in heaven. You are beautiful, my sweet, sweet song. You are beautiful. I'll sing it again. You ride up on the clouds to lead me to the truth. You are the spirit inside me. You ride up on the clouds to lead me to the truth. You are the spirit inside me. You are beautiful, my sweet, sweet song. You are beautiful, my sweet, sweet song. You are beautiful, my sweet, sweet song. I'll sing it Forever, you are beautiful, my sweet, sweet.
You poured out all your blood. You died upon the cross. You are my Jesus who loves me. You poured out all your blood. You died upon the cross. You are my Jesus who loves me. You are beautiful. I'll sing it again You are beautiful, my sweet, sweet song You are beautiful, my sweet, sweet song You are beautiful, my sweet, sweet song I'll sing it again I'll sing it again. You are beautiful. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Loving God, we give, we give thanks, thanks for restoring us in your image and nourishing us with spiritual food in the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. Now send us forth a people forgiven renewed and renewed, eager to join in a community of learning together, to proclaim your love to the world, and to continue in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and to be gracious to you. 
the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. good. Um, blessings to you this day. Let me pray. Oh, Lord, these are your beloved. These are your beloved. I pray that each one in this room um, finds someone to partnership this day who would help them not feel so isolated in this world that seems so challenged with our own sort of despair depression, sadness, unhousedness of our bodies. The good word is that you have grace for us, each one. And so spread your grace freely, fully, um, fully spread your grace among us. And allow your compassion and your love to constrain us in bonds of peace. I pray this in Jesus' name. And now I say, go in peace to love and serve.
hello. It is now time to eat. Just want to say thank you. We have alumni that come in every year. And in the liturgical world, the lobby area of a church is called the narthex, and that symbolizes the world. And so alumni, they come in from the world, and then they move out into the world. And what we seek to embody, what we seek to symbolize in that is alumni come back from the world to bless us and to send us into our academic year. And then we, in turn, send them back out into the world as they go to seek uh, mercy and justice and love the Lord their God. So that's some of why they disappear, why the alumni disappear, but I just, I would say thank you to them, but I wasn't fast enough. Um, now you have uh, probably a, a kind of a big challenge, which is to follow my directions. So every year we have a picnic or a cookout at Volunteer Park, which is just right over there. If you go out the building, you can turn right first at 10th Street, and then you can turn left, this is if you're walking, at Highland Drive, okay? And you just keep walking, you're gonna enter the park and you're gonna go over some hills and it'll be nice and scenic, and then you'll see uh, where we're, the grill and where we're cooking the hamburgers, all right? And hot dogs and vegan stuff. Um, if you're driving, maybe a little bit more challenging, but similar, you want to, Go to 10th Street, which is this road out here, take a right, and then on Prospect, take a left. You should see an entrance to the park then on your left. You see what we're doing here? We're kind of making, we're going like this, then we're going like this, then we're going like this. That's what you're doing if you're 